Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Now you may notice this is a slightly different setup. Well, I'm slightly in the middle of changing around this setup in my room. So this is sort of a half-baked stage. So this isn't the final setup, but we're going to go with it for now. But nonetheless, today's video is going to be another episode of the Unluckiest Driver series. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on Sir Sterling Moss. Now, Sir Sterling Moss raced in Formula 1 between 1951 and 1961. So a pretty short career in Formula 1, especially for someone who came out of that era of Formula 1 alive because a lot of people at the time unfortunately lost their life in the middle of an F1 career. Many people believe that Sir Sterling Moss is the greatest Formula 1 driver never to win a title. His first four seasons of Formula 1 were actually not full-time seasons. He raced for multiple teams and he got his first podium in 1954 racing for the Equip Moss team. There's no relation there between himself and the team. In 1955, he'd gone to race for Damien Le Benz, winning his first race at the British Grand Prix. He would go on to finish second place in the 1955, 1956, 1957 and 1958 World Championships, so four consecutive years finishing second place in the championship. In 1955, he finished just one point behind Mike Hawthorne after dropped scores, where only the six best finishes were taken. In those years in Formula 1, he won some of the most iconic races in the sport, including Monaco, Great Britain, obviously the British Grand Prix, and the Italian Grand Prix held at Monza, all seen as by many as some of the greatest Grand Prix in terms of history, at least. He would come close to winning the title again in 1959, 1960, and 1961. He finished P3 in those three consecutive seasons. In these years, he won the Monaco Grand Prix twice more and was unlucky not to win a championship because he had a very unreliable car. And at that time of Formula One, where the car was so, so important, of course, the driver was very, very important in terms of getting the most out of that car. But when a car was unreliable, even if the driver was at the top of his game, he could still not go for a championship. It's actually incredible he finished third place in the 1960 season as he had a serious accident in the Belgian Grand Prix practice session. He missed three Grand Prix because of that accident but still finished third place in the championship so you never know if he didn't have that big accident in Belgium possibly he could have gone on to win that championship. Many actually say that Sterling Moss should have won the 1958 World Championship as he actually got his title rival Mike Hawthorne out of a penalty which meant Mike Hawthorne got six extra points for the championship and considering the championship was only decided by one point this move effectively meant Mike Hawthorne won the championship over Sterling Moss in this season. So basically in this scenario, something happened on track, meaning that Mike Hawthorne got a penalty for it. And so Sterling Moss sort of backed him up and said that, no, he shouldn't be getting a penalty for this. So basically, Mike Hawthorne got out of a penalty and so Sterling Moss effectively cost himself a championship through being too nice to a team, or not even a teammate, just a rival really, but I guess at the time they were both British in, a, in Formula 1, so they were sort of, I could say, good friends. So in a way, it's kind of sad that he wasn't a little bit more competitive in that way because, of course, in Monday Formula 1, I don't think you'd see anyone sort of helping a rival out to uh, get them out of a penalty because they're always complaining on the radios about he should get a penalty for going two centimetres off the track. But back then, obviously, I'd say there's a bit more camaraderie in the sport. Everyone realises how dangerous the sport is. Everyone sort of bands together a bit more. But that effectively cost the Sterling Moss a championship in 1958. In 1962, Moss crashed in his Lotus at Goodwood, which put him in a coma for a month and put the left side of his body into sort of a, a temporary paralysed position for six months. After this, Moss decided to retire from Formula 1 and after a private test later in the year after he'd recovered from his injuries, he'd realised he was much significantly slower than he was before. Even though he was technically retired from motorsport, Mossford ended up racing in some sports cars in the 1970s and in touring cars in the 1980s, but has decided not to really race that much since. Moss even did a qualifying session in the Le Mans Legend Race in 2011, but he admitted after that qualifying session that he had scared himself and he retired from motorsports indefinitely from that point. It's kind of crazy because he's actually racing up to the age of 81, which is awesome. I mean, I don't know whether you'd see Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel. I honestly don't know whether you'd see, still see them racing at the age of 81. So as of right now, Sir Sterling Moss is 88 years of age. And unfortunately for him, he's obviously gone through quite a bit of sort of health conditions over the last couple of years, which has obviously taken a big toll on him. And he sort of retired from public appearances, as, as sort of silly as that sounds. When there's someone as famous as the Sterling Moss, of course people are going to keep asking him to do events, get involved in Formula One in some way. But you know, at the end of you know, age of 88, you need to sort of say, yeah, enough's enough here. I need to just sort of 
enjoy the rest of my life in a way because he doesn't want to be doing media appearances right up to the end and obviously after the uh, the illnesses that he's had it's obviously kind of you need, you need to you need to just take that time away and I'm, I'm sure he still watches Formula One and still you know watches it from his TV and still enjoys it but you know he's got to the age where he just doesn't need to be involved in the sport as much and I think that's great I mean it's great that he's taken that step I mean I don't know whether a lot of people in Formula One would just you know push them push it out the way like that I guess a lot of people want to stay involved with it but um yeah it's great to see Sterling Moss have an incredible career but he was so unlucky not to get a world championship in 1958 especially where he probably should have had that championship as I've already explained so I just want to read off some of the statistics from Sir Sterling Moss's career because of course he didn't have the longest career but he still had some amazing success so I've got it on my phone right here so I apologize um, but he had 16 wins in his 66 starts in Formula 1 which is a pretty good turnover rate especially with the cars being as unreliable as they were back then uh, he had 16 pole positions and 19 fastest laps and his last race win was in the 1961 German Grand Prix so he got his first race win in the 1955 British Grand Prix so he had what 60 years of big success in Formula 1. Actually, you can scrap that. It was seven years of his F1 career where he was ultra competitive. Of course, he had the four years where he finished second and the three years where he finished third. Of course, some of them he was slightly further behind than others. But generally, when you see the same driver in the top three in the championship for so many years in a row, a bit like Lewis Hamilton in a way, Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso before he went to McLaren, they were always up there, pretty much whatever car they were in. So I think that just sort of proves really how good a driver uh, Sir Sterling Moss was. And it is so unlucky, especially at that era of time. If he was racing in a Monday era of Formula 1, you feel like he probably would have been able to win championships, especially if he was in the right car. But because the cars were so unreliable back then, that was a big factor in winning a championship was actually getting your car to the finish and sometimes the driver was just sort of out of the question the car was going to break down when it was going to break down actually having a look at sort of just the history of the Sterling Moss and what sort of happened in his era and apparently at the time of course the I wasn't alive but looking back a lot of people saw him in the way that they see like Lewis Hamilton nowadays in Formula 1 he was sort of in pop, you know pop culture in a way he was in celebrity culture he was that famous now that that's obviously kind of hard for me to sort of judge because I wasn't alive back then but it is kind of crazy to see. He doesn't seem like the sort of guy that was out there as like Lewis Hamilton, for example, but he really was apparently back then the same sort of guy. He was really involved in celebrity culture and he was just a massive name in England, especially, obviously, because that's where he's from. So, um, yeah, he was such an unlucky driver throughout his career not to get that world championship in a slightly different way to Fernando Alonso, where Fernando Alonso basically just didn't choose the right team to go to at a certain stage of his career, basically the one he's in right now. And that's the reason why Alonso hasn't had more race uh, wins and more championships is probably because he just hasn't been in the right car and team. Uh, but so Sterling Moss was just, I guess, a more unlucky in a way because his car just was never quite reliable enough. Maybe he had a driver or so that was in the, the racing against him that he wasn't quite able to match on some days, meaning just in general he wasn't able to win that uh, a lucrative championship, unfortunately for Sir, you know, for Sir Sterling Moss. That's a bit of a mouthful, but yeah, but basically uh, Sterling Moss will forever be known as one of the greatest drivers ever in Formula 1 and most people would say probably that the greatest driver in Formula 1 never to win a world championship. So that's pretty much it for this episode. Thank you for watching as always. Thank you for the suggestions in the last couple of episodes it is very very hot in the uk right now i'm probably going to upload this the day after i record it but yeah i mean i've actually not been in england that much recently and it's actually hotter here in england weirdly so um yeah basically i'm going to be going on to more travels over the next couple of weeks slash months so unfortunately there's not going to be such regular content on the channel guys but i just want to say massive thank you to all the support and there will still be content i've sort of taken two weeks off and i'm back now i'm going to be posting hopefully two uh, maybe three times a week, but we'll, we'll, we'll stay two times a week for now. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you guys around soon. Goodbye. Before I completely finish this video, I'm just interested to know, would you guys be interested in any sort of t-shirts if I ever designed them? I have been thinking about it. I mean, I know I haven't really got a, a massive fan base to be selling t-shirts to, but I don't know. I felt like there might be a possibility. So if you want maybe you can leave a suggestion down in the comment section or maybe you can give me just an idea that you might be interested in some sort of t-shirt i wouldn't be any sort of in the need of money in a way i'd just literally be selling it for like retail price so yeah it's not money thing at all it just if you're interested in these sort of t-shirts probably not but just thought maybe you might be interested so let me know in the comment section but thanks for watching guys see you guys around soon goodbye